Uh, thank you all for having me. Uh, my name is Sullivan Ayuso. I'm a third year uh, general surgery resident at Carolinas Medical Center in Charlotte. Um, and the title of the talk that I'll be giving is Multi-Center Analysis of Laparoscopic Versus Open Umbilical Hernia Repair Outcomes and Quality of Life. Um, the only disclosure that I have personally is that I'm a member of the United States Army. The rest of the disclosures are listed here. Umbilical hernia repair is the second most common hernia repair performed by uh, general surgeons. And it, conventionally, it's been performed via an open approach. However, within the last 30 years, laparoscopy has uh, been become increasingly common as a means of approach, uh, approaching the repair. Um, however, despite its commonality, we generally still lack multi-center data assessing outcomes and quality of life. So mesh repair for umbilical hernias is the standard of care. Um, a randomized control uh, trial that was published in Lancet in 2018 showed that um, for all hernias that are greater than one centimeter in defect, uh, that the authors concluded that using mesh would decrease uh, the risk of recurrence. And the latest guidelines from America's Hernia Society and EHS uh, would support that statement. So the aim of our study was to assess outcomes and quality of life uh, between patients undergoing open and laparoscopic repair. As we say frequently at Carolinas, we're essentially quality of life doctors, and that's one of the most important uh, outcomes, if not the most important outcomes that we care about as surgeons. So we use the International Hernia Mesh Registry to query for patients that were undergoing open and laparoscopic repair. Um, the primary outcome was quality of life assessed both short and long term. Um, and then we evaluated hernia recurrence and wound complications as well. So the IHMR is a uh, multinational prospectively maintained hernia database. Um, importantly, uh, third party collectors uh, input the data into the database in an anonymous fashion and are not affiliated with surgical teams. The quality of life outcomes that were reported are uh, patient centered um, and they extend from one month postoperatively up to two years. So quality of life was uh, evaluated using the Carolinas Comfort Scale. Uh, using the Carolinas Comfort Scale, uh, we evaluated mesh sensation, pain, and movement limitations. Um, the CCS uh, is a, on a Likert scale, um, as you can see here, uh, zero through five. We chose a score of two or greater um, to be a, a concerning uh, quality of life or a non-ideal quality of life due to the fact that it was bothersome to the patient. So here are the patient characteristics. We uh, were able to um, obtain data from nearly 600 uh, patients undergoing uh, umbilical hernia repair. Um, more commonly, the open approach was used. Um, laparoscopic patients did have an increased BMI, uh, were uh, more frequently female. Um, and you can see almost a fifth of the patients were smokers and one in 10 were diabetics. So in terms of operative characteristic, open repair was more likely to be performed uh, when the hernia defect was smaller in size, not surprisingly. In the laparoscopic group, there were more instances of uh, recurrent hernias, um, and laparoscopic uh, repair all in all took more time uh, than uh, the open approach. Um, so post-operative outcomes uh, shown here uh, um, include, are notable for uh, seroma formation being higher in the laparoscopic group. Um, wound infection uh, was uh, comparable um, in this analysis. Um, and then uh, hernia recurrence was uh, nearly double in the laparoscopic group, but did not reach statistical significance. So um, using each of these quality of life metrics separately, um, we see uh, mesh sensation, uh, which was uh, not different um, preoperatively, and that's important. Um, was uh, worse um, on the y-axis is the patients um, who had a non-ideal quality of life for laparoscopic repair um, at both one month and all the way out to 24 months at three different time points. Pain, uh, notably, uh, was similar in the preoperative time point, and we know that uh, preoperative pain is the most important predictor of postoperative pain was higher in the laparoscopic group uh, at all time points as well. Um, kind of more of the same here, even though there's a baseline uh, difference in uh, activity limitation um, at all time points, uh, open repair um, performed at least as good, if not better, than laparoscopic repair. 
And then we wanted to assess patients that uh, didn't have any symptoms prior to the operation as well. Here you see that patients perform very well um, in terms of pain uh, and activity limitation using both open and laparoscopic repair. And this is the overall quality of life metric. You see the same thing, um, even though there's a brief uh, performance, um, a better performance with the open repair at one month, by 24 months, uh, there's more or less equivalence. Um, so we propensity matched uh, the data as well um, based on hernia size recurrence uh, and BMI, uh, and we're able to get 138 patients in the laparoscopic and open groups. We evaluated the same uh, post-operative complications. The only thing that's notable here is that uh, wound infection rate was higher in the open group than it was in the laparoscopic group, uh, and hernia recurrence uh, was also uh, higher in the laparoscopic group after propensity matching based on the aforementioned factors. So we wanted to assess quality of life after the propensity match as well. Here, um, perhaps not as impressive as the pre-match group, um, but you see mesh sensation, which was uh, uh, not different preoperatively, and again, patients would only have mesh sensation if they had a prior repair, um, was uh, improved with open repair, um, and pain, it was improved in the short term. And then looking at activity limitation and overall, um, we see that there was a difference preoperatively, um, but at two uh, different time points at six months, there was uh, improvement uh, using an open repair. So in conclusion, the open uh, approach to umbilical hernia repair has a low recurrence rate. Um, it's associated with higher rates of SSI, but decreased rates of seroma. Um, and it does show an improvement in overall quality of life, which was demonstrated in both the pre and post match uh, groups. Um, open uh, umbilical hernia repair appears to be uh, more effective uh, with better quality of life. However, patients that do not have symptoms appear to fare well uh, using both approaches. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, it's allowing me to share our work. I'll take any questions at this time. Thank you very much.